Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at some uh, scenario based interview questions that you can expect as part of your um, AWS. Now, whether you are preparing for an interview uh, on AWS or you're just looking to enhance your skills, especially with the uh, scenario based, then this video is just for you. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is you're tasked with uh, designing a scalable web application on AWS to handle fluctuating traffic. What services and architecture would you use to ensure both high availability and cost efficiency? So for this, we can make use of elastic load balancing to basically uh, make the application highly available. So ELB can be used to distribute your incoming traffic across uh, multiple EC2 instances, which are running in different availability zones. So this will ensure that your application is highly available. And then we can implement auto scaling to um, ensure um, uh, you know, handling the uh, scalability. Uh, uh, we can do that by making use of auto scaling. So auto scaling will help us to automatically scale our EC2 instances based on the uh, traffic demand. So if the traffic is more, then launch more instances. And if the traffic is less, then terminate instances. Then we can store our uh, static assets um, in S3 buckets. Like if you have any images, any uh, files, any CSS files, we can store them in S3 buckets. And then we can leverage uh, CloudFront for um, uh, as, as a content delivery network and we can uh, cache the data for uh, low latency. And in terms of database, we can make use of Amazon RDS. And then we can make use of the multi-AZ deployment, which will uh, make sure the database is highly available. Or we can also make use of Amazon Aurora for uh, better performance. And then finally, we will need to implement our Route 53, which will be our DNS. So we can also have a health check, which will ensure that uh, DNS failover uh, will happen if one region goes down. So basically, we'll have our EC2 instances where the application will be hosted. Uh, we'll have a load balancer uh, for these EC2 instances. And then this load balancer will be behind our Route 53 DNS. Uh, we can also make use of auto scaling, uh, S3 buckets, CloudFront, Amazon RDS. So, you know, this is basically what we will be using. The next question we have is your application needs to process large volumes of data and convert it into various formats for downstream services. What AWS services would you use to automate and scale this process? So for this, we can make use of S3 to store any kind of data. So S3 is an object based storage and we can use it to store any kind of data we want so we can store the raw data here and then we can trigger a lambda function so whenever there is an uh, event in s3 like new files are uploaded we can make use of the s3 event notifications to trigger the lambda functions uh, we can also make use of sns or sqs for uh, queuing and uh, managing those events so this will ensure that uh, um, no events are lost and there's a smooth processing even when there is a high uh, data volumes and if there is a batch processing required then we can consider using aws batch for running multiple uh, jobs in parallel we can also consider using amazon emr which is the elastic map reduce for uh, processing large data sets um, and then finally we will be storing the processed data in s3 buckets or in a data warehousing service like amazon redshift the next question we have is your organization has decided to use AWS for disaster recovery, but also wants to minimize the cost. So what disaster recovery architecture would you recommend? So for this, uh, we need to implement a pilot light architecture where we're only having the core components of the infrastructure as part of our disaster recovery. So, you know, like having a very minimal uh, EC2 instance for the application and having only a standby uh, database uh, which is always running and we won't be using any other components uh, we can also make use of s3 buckets or glacier for the backups and snapshots of the database and file system and in case of any failures um, we'll be using uh, uh, infrastructure as code so in aws we can make use of cloud formation templates uh, we can also make use of auto scaling to rapidly launch additional resources to 
full capacity whenever needed and then finally we can make use of the route 53 to uh, fail over the routing to the standby region or the availability zone so basically uh, set up a very minimal um, uh, infrastructure with only the core components where we have the application running and if anything goes wrong in the primary region we'll swim uh, simply uh, update the route 53 pointing to the um, uh, standby region the next question we have is you need to ensure secure and compliant data transfer between your on-premises data center and aws what would you recommend so for this we can make use of aws direct connect so direct connect is a service which provides us with a dedicated high bandwidth and low latency connection and we can use this to establish the connection between our on-premises data center and aws without using the public internet okay so for encryption purpose you know when we when the data transfer is happening we can make use of vpn or direct connect for encryption we can also make use of aws site to site vpn for secure communication between the on premises data center and the aws um, uh, data center now uh, we can encrypt the data if the data is at rest uh, in S3 bucket, we can make use of SS, uh, KMS or uh, S3 provided keys to encrypt the data. Uh, we can also leverage IAM roles and policies that gives the least uh, privilege access to control which users or which services can interact with the AWS resources. Okay, so we can make use of all these things. The next question we have is you are managing a microservices based application that is experiencing latency due to high uh, database load. How would you optimize the architecture so for this we can implement uh, read replicas in uh, amazon rds or aurora read replica so like having a uh, instead of sending all the queries to the primary database we will send them to the uh, read replicas and this will help you to offload the uh, traffic from the primary uh, db instance okay so uh, we can also consider using the cache database which is the amazon elastic cache database um, and we can use this to cache any frequently queried data and this will help us to reduce the date uh, the load on the uh, primary database and also improves the response time of the uh, queries then we can make use of this x-ray service to trace the requests and diagnose uh, which services are uh, causing the latency like uh, is it rds service or some other service which is causing the latency and if it's a right heavy uh, application then uh, we can consider partitioning the database or using dynamo db for high uh, write throughput okay so depending on uh, the use case we can also consider using uh, some other uh, services the next question we have is you have a critical application that cannot tolerate any downtime how would you architect this solution on aws to achieve high availability so for this we can deploy the application across multiple uh, regions or basically have a multi-region architecture uh, which will help us to avoid any regional outages so like you know having a primary secondary setup or an active passive setup uh, so we can um, implement route 53 with latency based routing so you know route 53 will take care of routing the request to uh, the region that is having the lowest latency we can also implement health checks to uh, fail over to a healthy uh, region uh, we can make use of multi az rds or aurora global database for uh, database redundancy and low latency cross region replication uh, we can store the data in s3 buckets which will uh, automatically replicate the objects across multiple availability zones so that way the data is highly available and if there is any issue in any region or in any availability zone we can leverage the other regions to um, you know uh, basically avoid any downtime with the uh, application availability the next question we have is your application requires secure storage of sensitive customer data uh, with auditing and monitoring of all access attempts what would you do so for this we can store the data in s3 buckets and we can enable encryption so for encryption we can make use of the server side encryption with kms service so kms it stands for key management service and we can use this for encryption for uh, encrypting the data at rest uh, we can also enable uh, s3 bucket policies and iam rules 
uh, and give very least privileges to uh, the resources and also tightly control who can access that data we can make use of the cloud trial service to basically uh, keep a track or monitor all the api requests that happening that's happening to the s3 service and other aw services and then we can implement amazon guard duty to detect if there's any suspicious activity that is happening to the data access so you no know, that way we can ensure that uh, the customer data is secure there's no uh, attempt to uh, unauthorized attempt to access the data the next question we have is your team needs a continuous integration or continuous deployment or delivery pipeline to automatically deploy applications in aws how would you set it up so um, aws has its own set of services that we can use for ci cd so we have this service called aws code pipeline which can be used to create our uh, uh, continuous delivery pipeline so starting from uh, integrating with a version control tool like github bitbucket to deployments we can make use of this service uh, for compiling and building the application we can make use of the code build service for um, uh, deploying the application so let's say if you want to deploy the application to beanstalk or containers or ec2 instances we can make use of the code deploy service uh, and then we can also integrate all the services with cloudwatch for monitoring purpose uh, amazon uh, systems manager service for post deployment operations like you know managing the environments and all those things we can do that but essentially when we talk about the cicd we have code build code deploy and the code pipeline the next question we have is your web application experiences a large number of requests from a particular geographical region causing latency how would you improve performance for users in that region so for this we can make use of amazon cloudfront as a cdn so basically it's a content delivery network which will help us to cache the data and then serve that cached data to the users that are there in that particular region we can also enable CloudFront regional edge caches to improve the performance by caching the frequently accessed objects and that will help you to improve the uh, performance. Uh, we can also consider deploying the application servers in a nearby um, uh, AWS region like you know using the multi-region deployment and then we can also use Route 53 geolocation routing policies that we have uh, to basically uh, route the traffic based on the location of the users. The next question we have is you need to implement fine grain access control for a growing number of users accessing an AWS Service S3 bucket. How would you uh, design this? So for this, we will be making use of IAM rules and policies to define the least privilege access or the fine grain permissions for the users or the groups. Uh, we can also implement bucket policies at the S3 bucket uh, level to control the access um, uh, for that S3 bucket and we can also make use of the object ACLs to control object level uh, permissions. Um, we can also in make use of the AWS Cognitive service for authentication and authorization. So, you know, we can use this service to authenticate and then authorize those um, users to uh, access specific uh, uh, services. The next question we have is your application is built on containers and you need a solution that allows automatic scaling of containers without managing the underlying servers what aws service would you recommend so for this um, when we talk about uh, containers in aws we have ecs eks and then we also have the openshift now in terms of ecs we have both serverless and server approach and when we talk about the serverless approach we have fargate so we can use this ecs with fargate to run the containers without managing the ec2 instances so that's basically the serverless approach so fargate will help us to automatically scale the container instances based on the resource uh, requirements that we have defined and also the demand so alternatively we can also use the eks service with fargate for uh, managing the kubernetes um, kubernetes based containers so if it's if you're using ecs then we can use ecs with fargate if you're using kubernetes then we can use eks with fargate the next question we have is you need to archive data that is rarely accessed but must be retained for compliance reasons how would you store this data in aws 
So for this, we can consider um, using the glacier service or uh, moving the data from the S3 bucket to the glacier. So we can either use the uh, S3 glacier or S3 glacier deep archive and this will help us to store very infrequently accessed data and also at a very low cost. So we can implement a lifecycle policy that will help us to automatically move the data from uh, uh, one um, uh, uh, storage class to another storage class like in this case to uh, Glacier and then we can also enable vault lock uh, at the Glacier level to enforce uh, compliance and prevent uh, any changes to the retention policies or accidental deletion of the data. The next question we have is you need to optimize costs for a fleet of EC2 instances uh, that are running non-critical workloads during business hours. How can you achieve cost savings without sacrificing the performance? So for this, we can either make use of the EC2 reserved instances or the savings plans. This is a pricing model we have and we can use this for running the predictable workloads during the business hours at a lower cost. Now, if you have a non-critical workload, then you can consider using spot instances, uh, which offer significant discounts. But uh, there are chances that your instances may get interrupted. So if you're okay with the interruption, then uh, definitely you need to consider using spot instances, which is much cheaper compared to using the reserved instances or the on-demand instances. Uh, we can also make use of the auto scaling to scale down the instances outside of the business hours automatically. So like let's say you have a business hour from 9 to 5 and after that you don't need those instances. So we can make use of the auto scaling to scale down those instances. The next question we have is your application handles sensitive data and you need to ensure encryption of data in transit and also at rest. How would you architect this solution on AWS? So if you are talking about uh, encrypting the data in transit, then we can make use of the SSL or TLS certificates to en encrypt the data in transit. Uh, so we have services like load balancers, CloudFront, RDS uh, that supports SSL termination. So you know we can uh, attach the certificates to this and we can encrypt the data in transit. Now, if your data is at rest, then we can make use of the server-side encryption uh, keys provided by S3 or we can make use of the KMS service to generate the keys and then encrypt the data at rest. So there are lots of services that supports this integration. So we can integrate them with the RDS, DynamoDB, EBS volumes and many other services. We can also enforce strict IAM policies and enable cloud trial for uh, monitoring access to the sensitive data. So basically uh, keeping a track of all the events, the API calls and everything. The next question we have is you need to migrate a large database from your on-premises database to AWS with minimal downtime. How would you achieve this? So for this, uh, AWS has a migration service that we can use, which is the AWS database migration service or DMS. We can use this to migrate any size of data with very minimal downtime. So DMS supports continuous uh, replication of your data to keep the source database and the target database in sync during the migration process itself. We can also make use of uh, AWS Snowball or Snowball Edge if you have to migrate very large data sets and you have a limitation on the network bandwidth. And once the data has been migrated, then we just need to switch the traffic to the AWS hosted database using the Route 53 service. And that brings us to the end of our uh, scenario based AWS interview questions. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to the channel for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I, I upload new videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.